Hello, my beautiful friends. Thank you so much for coming to another episode of the Intuitive Art Show. We have a wonderful guest today. We're going to talk a lot about spirit guides with Yamil Yamunia. And um, to start things off, though, I'm going to show you my intuitive art drawing. So if you've never done intuitive art with me, you can go to intuitiveartacademy.com for your free class. And um, you can even pause this and draw along if you'd like. So since we're talking about spirit guides, uh, I decided to ask, what do spirit guides help us with? So it's kind of interesting. It's actually not at all what I thought because, you know, I've, I love spirit guides. I've been talking to them for a long time. And I figured there'd be like emotional stuff in here and, you know, peace and healing. But no, it's actually quite different. So what showed up first was this aligned action box. So, okay, that's cool. There's like a box of aligned action. So maybe they advise us on, um, you know, how to take aligned action or they themselves have a limit to what they can help us with as far as actions are concerned. Um, and then in the middle, I picked up two colors at the same time, this red color and the gray color. Red for me is action. Gray is intuition or spirit. So that makes sense. Like they're weaving together um, their actions, their advice on actions with spirit, and we're intuitively receiving that information. And then the last color that's kind of all over the place is this green. But it's not just any green, it's kind of a gray green. So it's we're feeling creative. Maybe it's like creative problem solving because it has that spirit um, and intuition involved in it, and green is creativity. So overall, it seems like creative problem solving, aligned actions, intuition, and uh, some just maybe general, general help with our own actions that we receive intuitively. So pretty interesting stuff. Yamil, how do you feel about this being a sphere kind expert? <laughs> <laughs> can you show it again? So I can yeah. See? Well, for me, the red is definitely same like action. It reminds me of Mars. Mm -hmm. like Mars. So yeah, steam, steaming forward. Um, and the um, rectangle or yeah, that's for me, that's about like physical energy. So bringing something into the physical with action. And then I would think the green is about Mother Earth. So nature. Um, so I would think there's a lot of help from nature spirits um, with manifesting. So I think the whole thing for me is about manifesting, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So before we get too much farther into the show, I would love to learn more about you. And um, and I know that you you didn't start off with a spirit guide business. You were actually helping artists make a living and I think that's so commendable and amazing because most of the people I know are artists as well and I know it can be kind of tough to get into that mindset so can you tell us a little bit about like how that started for you how you're sure. moving into the spirit guide thing as well well the um, creative web biz business um, that started in 2010 but it like the idea started in 2006 when this was still in MySpace times mm -hmm. um, when I had a MySpace page and I had just decided that I wanted to be a full-time artist and I was still pretty yeah I'm still introverted but I was also very shy and I didn't see myself go to galleries with my art and being like can I show my art here I had no idea how to do that <laughs> so then I saw that other artists would post their art on Facebook uh, on MySpace and I was like oh that's a good idea so I did that too and I got a lot of great feedback which was, which was great for me because it was validation and then I figured oh maybe I can sell my art online and this was before Etsy and before I don't even know maybe the beginning days of PayPal so it was much harder by then and I was super broke so I didn't have anyone to build a website for me so what I did is I went online and searched like free website builder and I found one and I set up my own website to forever, of course, because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then I put my art on there and waited and nothing happened. <laughs> and so I was like, hmm, okay, so now what? And I started Googling again, how to like 
maybe sell stuff online. And I started learning about um, online marketing and um, how, yeah, about WordPress. So I went over to WordPress, set up a new website with WordPress, and then learned about online marketing. And then I started selling a little bit. And with my first um, successes, I posted on my blog about it, what I had learned about WordPress, what plugins I used, that kind of stuff. And other artists really liked it. There wasn't much information out there back then. I mean, there still isn't that much, um, but back then, certainly not. Um, so they liked it, and I was like, oh, this makes sense. And then in 2010, I decided I could help other artists even more by um, building websites for them because now I knew how to do it. I could do it in a week and it would take them months <laughs> like it took me. Um, so that's what I started doing. And then once I started building websites, these artists would come back and say, well, I'm not selling anything. The website sucks. And I was like, no, the website doesn't suck. Like you just don't know anything about marketing. <laughs> so they had the same problem that I had. And so I basically with every website, I also had to teach the marketing. And at some point I was like, okay, I'm just going to do the marketing and not the websites anymore. So that's how I started creative with this and started teaching artists um, yeah, to sell their art online. Very cool. And then, yeah, and then with the spirit guys, that's a whole different story. <laughs> that started 17 years ago when I was still living in Germany. Um, and one night I woke up. And there was this guy standing in my room, like physically a guy. Um, I remember he was wearing jeans, no shoes, no shirt, um, dark, short hair. He looked like he was um, indigenous from somewhere in South America. And I was just staring at him and I had like sleep paralysis. Um, so I couldn't move. I just stared at him and I was like, who is this guy in the middle of the night in my bedroom? Um, and he just stared back at me, but then out of nowhere, he produced this like red glowing orb, maybe a little bit bigger than a baseball. And he threw it over to me and I could feel it land on my bed on my left side. Um, but the next thing I know is like the next morning I go like, what was that? <laughs> so I blacked out and woke up the next morning and my hand immediately started searching for that glowing orb. Um, and then my brain started working. I was like, what the, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, two or three days later, I was signed up for a um, workshop on shamanism in Berlin because this all this happened at a time that I started being interested in my roots because I was born in Colombia and my birth mom is um, Embera, which is an indigenous tribe who live on the West Coast in Colombia. Still, they still have shamans and live traditional lifestyles. And so I got interested in that. And um, so I signed up for that workshop and I went there. And what we learned was um, how to travel to the spirit world, how to meet your spirit guides or spirit teachers, as they call it. And before we did it, he explained how to do it. And um, he said, well, what the first thing that usually happens is when you meet your guides is they will give you energy, either by like giving you a hug. That's often what happens often. And you will really feel the energy go into your body. Or um, sometimes they will give you a red glowing orb thing and that's the energy. And I was like, what? That's crazy. So now I know who that was. That was my spirit guide in the middle of the night. So yeah, that was how I got started um, with spirit guides. And then I was so interested in the topic, like spirit spirituality generally, but also what kind of beings live out there in the universe besides humans. And so I studied that for a long time. And then over the years, I could more and more see other people's spirit guides. In the beginning, mostly animals, but nowadays also angels and ancestor spirits and gods and goddesses and nature spirits and all kinds of beings. Yeah. So that's how that started. And then two years ago, I had this calling that I, or one and a half years ago, that I just felt called to do something with it and to really use it to help people. So, um, yeah, and six months ago, I started this new business, and now I connect people with their guides. That's great. That's a lovely story. I love that so much. And, um, you know, I have to just ask for the people wondering, because my first time seeing something, I was really scared. Were you scared when you were in your bed and you couldn't move, or was it? 
a pleasant feeling? Like, how did you feel at that moment? I, I wasn't scared. That's really weird. Like every time these weird things happen to me, I'm not scared because I'm in this like different mold somehow. I don't know, but um, it, I was surprised. <laughs> I was like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I had something else happen once. Um, three aliens were in my bedroom and I same situation, kind of like I woke up in the middle of the night and I wanted to leave the room. Um, and I turn around to face the door and there are these three grays and I just look at them and they looked at me and they were just as surprised that I could see them as I was surprised to see them. <laughs> and then the next thing happened, one of them ran over to me and, um, and grabbed me by the hand like this. He touched me, not really good. He just touched me like this. And then again, I woke up the next morning. I was like, whoa, what was that? And <laughs> the moment I woke up, I realized that it wasn't really me who had gotten up. It was my astral body to go out and travel. And they were, I wasn't supposed to see them. <laughs> but um, so they were surprised. And they know, like, um, we, you probably also know that if you touch the body, the astral body will go back into the body. So that's why he went over to me and touched me here. So I would go back and not like interfere with them, I guess. So yeah. And but when these things happen, I'm always surprised, but not scared. And then afterwards, I'm always surprised that I'm not scared. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Gosh. So and you also you do free readings on Friday mornings. I see. Well, morning for me, it might yeah. be evening for you. Um, yeah. So how has that been? I mean. Doing spirit guide readings is one of the things I enjoy most, and I, I don't do it often anymore, but what are you experiencing in those sessions, and what's your favorite part about connecting with other people's guides? Oh, um, the sessions are awesome. First of all, I started them, um, well, like I said, one and a half years ago, I started feeling that I should connect people and do something with it, and one day, about a year ago, um, I was living in Barcelona at the time. Um, I had this like download, basically a complete business plan of what I was supposed to do. <laughs> and the free readings were a part of it. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. And so I started doing these um, basically for practice um, because I just set up that business without really practicing. Nowadays, I'm like, why did I even do that? That's crazy. <laughs> but somehow it worked out. Um, so, yeah, I did it for practice um and i really love them because um first of all yeah like i said it's for practice second of all um people get to know me they get to know how i work they get to know um me as a person they see um and also like people who don't really have the money can go there and then yeah get a mini reading for five minutes and i really like it um because it's always a surprise to me because i just like get the information and sometimes I don't even know what it's about and then the other person will say oh yeah that makes total sense because I don't know for example I talk about someone's granddaughter being here to teach the person I'm reading for and they're like oh yeah she came to me in a dream and she told me she was going to be my teacher before she was born for example and so yeah these, that is really fun to me to see um yeah the validation I guess because otherwise because when I started I thought I was just making stuff up mm -hmm. <laughs> but then when you see oh this makes sense to the other person yeah I love that that's great so part of your mission is connecting people with their guides do you teach people how to connect as well on their own yes I just started doing that um, I'm actually um, launching a course right now perfect uh, yes yeah why don't you tell us about it um, so this course is about, yeah, how to consciously communicate with your guides. And um, what I'm going to teach is um, two ways, like one, how sh or neo shamans, shamanic practitioners do it with um, visual journeys. And the other way is how um, spiritualism or spiritualists do it, like with um, sitting in the power and really feeling the spirit that physically around you in your aura. Um, and I also teach um, things like, is it really my spirit guide or am I just imagining things? 
um, what is your main Claire? So what is the main way to which you personally can connect with your guides? Because everyone has different ways of communicating, just like everyone has different ways of learning. Some people are more about hearing information. Others are more about seeing it. Some are more about really doing things. So um, that's important. And all these things that you have to really know to consciously communicate with your guides. So that's what I will be teaching in this course. And I'm really looking forward to it. Excellent. That's really cool. So what is the biggest reason why people don't connect or kind of stop themselves from connecting? Like self-doubt or do they just need to know their own clear preference, like what's easiest for them? Is there something you've seen kind of as a theme? Yes. Um, one is what you just mentioned that um, a lot of people think they have to see something and they don't realize that there are other ways like hearing or um, feeling. Um, also, people oftentimes think they, it has to be, they have to um, see, feel or hear them outside of themselves, but they don't realize that it's just as valid if they have like internal in intuitive um, guidance that the voice of their spirit guide can sound in their head just like their own voice. Um, there's a little tip, by the way. Oftentimes, if some if um, you hear something in your head, like a thought, and it, it says, I, blah, 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 I am, for example, that is you and your ego. But if it starts with you or we, then it's oftentimes your guides. Mm, very cool. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is why people um, have a hard time communicating is basically their ego so they will just tell themselves oh this can't be true because it was so easy or this can't be true this can't be their name because it's a boring name or this can't be my spirit guide because it's a ant and I want a lion because that's much cooler <laughs> for example or um yeah, they don't realize that they are already communicating with their guides all the time. So it feels normal. And that's why they don't think it's real. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of people are expecting to be like hit over the head with some huge like revelation. Yeah. And when that doesn't happen, it's easy to doubt. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. There's another thing that sometimes when they do get a message, they're like, yeah, but I knew that already. And then I tell them, well, yeah, you knew it because your guide has been trying to tell you this for 10 years. <laughs> so, yeah, of course you already know. It doesn't always have to be, like you say, a big revolution, uh, revelation. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So what would make people want to communicate then? Like, what is the benefit of having a conscious relationship with your guide? seeing that they're already influencing us in, you know, in a positive way, they're already sending us their energy. What happens when that conscious relationship is developed? Well, a big thing for me, for example, was um, trust, trust in the universe, trust in yourself, because um, when you can communicate with your guides, um, you kind of know where you're going and um, where you're guided towards know that you're not alone you know that you're not um you know that you're supported um another thing is that um you know that you're always on your path and that you don't get lost somewhere a lot of people are afraid that they might have gotten off the path and are not doing what they're supposed to be doing and if you can feel or see or hear your guide you will always know for example, for me, I can I can feel my guides, and when I, even if I let's say write a sales page, and then when I write a sentence and I'm not sure, then I just feel, and then he'll just send me like a wave of energy, and then I know, oh, okay, this is okay. If I don't feel it, I know, oh, I have to change it a little bit. Like really practical things, um, and like I said, for me, it's just a feeling, like an energy. Um, it doesn't always have to be a voice or an image or something. Very cool. So you also mentioned that your name was given to you by your guides. Can you tell us that story? Yes. Yeah, so um, this was God, maybe 15 years ago. Um, and I was starting to feel really drawn to, um, well, she has different names. Some call her Yimaya, some call her Mami Wata, or um, yeah, the goddess of the ocean. Um, and 
I did also did some ayahuasca sessions at the time. I tried to do that once a year. Um, and every time I do ayahuasca ceremonies, I always mm. have visions of mermaids, mm. always. <laughs> like they always come and visit me and then I swim with them and it's always really cool. So um, I, when I went online for the first time, had my MySpace profile like I talked about earlier, um, I had this intuition to um, give myself a different name, like an artist name. Um, and I knew I wanted it to be something that had to do with um, yeah, the goddess of the ocean. So I basically played around a little bit until it felt right. And I got that yeah, intuitively, I knew this is it. So it's, it's very much like Yemanya, just um, changed a little bit. I wanted to have the moon in there as well. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, so you like compiled your own perfect spiritual artist name yeah that's really great yeah so what is the biggest misconception about spirit guides good question let me think about that first off i think what we mentioned earlier maybe that it has that they always have like these big revelations for us um and that it's not just maybe also about like little things like um, I mean the the main messages that I give people are really about like either validation that they're doing the right thing or that they um, shouldn't be afraid um, to let go of their fears to open their heart more um, to realize that it's much easier to manifest things than they think um, to let go of pain a lot a lot of times also especially when it comes to relationships with family or romantic partners so really in the end um, basic things that we do know but um, when we hear them again from our guides then yeah, it helps and i think that is one of the biggest misconceptions and then again also the one that people think they have to see them outside of themselves and also, also that they always have to see them and then also one that they think it has to be something really impressive, like a lion or a wolf or a Native American shaman. or And that can all be true. But if, it, if you, one of your guides is an ant, then don't reject it because they have like really good lessons too for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the truth is we're all just shape-shifting anyway. None of us are really human, exactly. not human, etc. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's another thing that I always tell them before I do a reading spirit guides don't have a physical form really they just use an image for us because it's easier and we can relate to them better but they don't have a physical form yeah I know I'm so glad you said that because um, when I was first starting out doing readings I did see mostly what appeared to be human forms um, but then as I got older like guides would show up like as a mountain or like as a like a tiny little elf in a forest or like in all these like marshmallows and and it was always I mean there's always a reason for it but I just thought it was so funny I in my experience I find most guides are hilarious like <laughs> they're just so fun and loving and funny and, and not all of them of course and and whatever personality they have is purposeful right and it gives us information for the person we're reading for for us absolutely yes I just love that like what are some of the weirdest encounters you've had with guides hmm. I had a really fun one with um, elves um I was lying in bed and I was just thinking and looking at the wall like it was a white wall and then suddenly this like um like a screen popped up like a television screen kind of and then there were these elves and it was like very traditional like almost Disney elf kind of way <laughs> and they like ran around and that like on that screen and like made their noses longer and shorter and tried to make me laugh and made like faces and all that kind of stuff. I was like, I don't know what this is about, but I had to laugh really hard. 
so I great. still don't know what it was. I think they just wanted me to laugh or something. I really loved that one. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cool. Ah, oh, man, I love this topic. It's it's really great. So what else don't we know about guides? Like, is there anything else you can think of that guides would want us to know? Or do your guides want to tell us something and join the convo? Like, whatever, whatever you're feeling. What I always also say is before I started reading is that um, there are different definitions of spirit guides and I have my own. So for example, spiritualism has a different definition of guides than shamanism and different yeah, other traditions. Mm. So one thing I always tell people is like, for me, there are seven different kinds of guides, um, which includes angels. It includes um, star beings which are the same as aliens, but I don't like the word. It sounds scary to some people, so I call them star beings. Um, uh, ancestor spirits, although mostly like the ones that you knew when you're in this life are not your spirit guides. They can still be around you um, and help you in certain ways, but they're not spirit guides in that sense because um, they might not be evolved enough. I don't know if you want your ant marble to help you with your spiritual development that might not be her strong suit so um then there's nature spirits of course like elves and fairies and that um gods and goddesses power animals also known as totem animals and i think i'm forgetting one oh ascended masters of course and they, yeah, they can show up in all kinds of ways. Um, like you said, they can show up as a marshmallow <laughs> if that <laughs> makes sense to the message they have for you. Yeah. So that is another thing that I always tell people and that they need to know. That's awesome. Oh, oh, there we go. And and people can hire guides, right? Like, how does that work? How can somebody request a guide to come and help them? Oh, you just basically say short prayer for example if you have trouble with your kids you can just say thank you universe spirit god whatever you want to call it for sending me someone who can help me with my kids and that's it and then someone will come um the, the important part is to not um speak out of fear so don't say oh please 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 help me because then you're coming from a place of lack um, and fear. And if you will say thank you for sending me someone, then you come from a place of like, um, you know that it's going to happen and you come from a place of abundance. So that is way more effective. And that's all you have to do really say thank you for helping me and supporting me in whatever I need. And then it will come. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm so refreshed by you and your non dogmatic ways yeah. of approaching this it's really nice um and is there ever an occasion to like rearrange your guide team like you know let go of a guide replace it like are we to be managing our guides or is that going to take care of itself i've never had i've never hired a guide so <laughs> but but um, I do know that for me, guides come in and then at some point they go again. And it can take a while. Sometimes, for example, right now, I feel that a new guide is coming in. And I don't know who it is yet or what kind of guide it is. I have no idea. I can just feel it. Um, and sometimes it takes a while. It can take years until they, you totally understand who they are, what their message is, and so forth. And then at some point they go again and that can also take a while till the energy just dissolves. And um, so for me, it has always just happened. Um, and sometimes, yeah, when I need help with something specific, then I'll, like I said earlier, I'll just um, ask for it and um, they will just come in for a day or five minutes or whatever, how long, however long it takes. But yeah, I've never um, sent one away. So yeah, I don't have experience with that. Nice. Cool. So I don't know. I could ask you a lot of things. I don't know how advanced people are, not in like a weird way, but I don't know how much they want to know. So this is kind of an interesting conversation because I think we could probably talk a lot about certain things. Well, just go for it. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have this experience. It just happened the other night where I was um, 
working on clearing out some old energy and I had a little bit of a stuckness in my um, third chakra and I called in a specialist and she came and just sat next to me on the bed and I could feel like the side of my body where she was. It was like bubbling and I could feel her in there and releasing stuff. It was like she was doing like surgery. And I had my other guides on the other side of me. And um, and it's just a really cool thing that all of this, anything we need can be given to us if we just ask for it. Um, yes. And a lot of stuff we need is given to us without us asking for it consciously. So I don't know, do you want to talk about specialists? If you, I, That's what I call them. I'm sure there's another word for it. But um, the people who give us energy work if we need it, you know. How about that? Yeah, yeah I, I think I um, somewhere I called them professionals. Yeah. Thought, yeah. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah, just like when you, I don't know, when you need something done on your house, then you call a specialist who can do this specific thing, like put in the windows in the house. I can't do it, so you call a specialist to do it. Um, you don't think about it twice when it when you're talk when it's about humans. So same thing for spirit guides. If you have a problem and you don't know how to fix it, then just ask for someone who can help. Um, yeah, um, also healer guides are a big thing. Um, a lot of people have like one healer guide who is with them their entire lives, but um, even sometimes that healer guide also doesn't know how to help you, and he will or she will get in someone else who can help, just like your general physician sometimes needs help from. A surgeon because he can do it so just like you had something going on with like your shirt third chakra then you then someone comes who is like a specialist for that mm-hmm. and then they fix you up and then they can go again yeah yeah, yeah. they can so, have skulls it's pretty good yeah exactly and that way you learn more about like other beings you learn more about the universe how it all works together just like let's say traveling teach to see more about humanity um so if you the more spirits you know with the more spirits you have worked the more you learn about the spirit world exactly yeah and speaking of healing a friend of mine has cancer right now and is doing um a little bit of like mainstream treatment but is also working with like healing chambers um in ships and is going there and spending time there and um, allowing her star beings, uh, family members and friends to help her out. And I do the same thing. I don't necessarily have the conscious memory of going to the healing chambers, but whenever I need something or whenever something's going on in my body, I always call my star being friends first. I consider them my doctor and I haven't gone to a regular doctor in a really long time um, not suggesting anyone watching that you don't go to the doctor go to the doctor if you want to go to the doctor but um my primary physician is an alien as we'd say <laughs> um, and they normally will come down and they'll even explain to me what's happening like I have a lot of random things happen to me over the years bodily wise and and they'll actually take the time and, and explain, oh, this is what's happening and it's going to last this much longer and then it'll be okay and you're fine. And, you know, just over yeah. the years, I've developed that kind of trust. So how much of your work is with star beings and and what what kind of relationship do you have with, with your family there, if any? Well, for me, the thing with star beings started, I don't know, like 13 years ago, maybe. I wasn't into it i didn't believe in any of that stuff that's how um, i started as well yeah. yeah but i um i was with someone at the time and he was very much into it so that's how i got in contact with it um and that's also why these three aliens that i saw um they were there for him not for me and that's why they were surprised that i saw them <laughs> but um so yeah um it started like i said I think about 13 years ago um and i with time got used to the thought of that okay there there's not just spirits there's also aliens <laughs> um and um with time i found out that my connection is to the star system sirius um which is also connected to like the whole mermaid scene 
because uh, like there are, for example, the Dogon from, from Mali say that um, star beings from Sirius star system came down and they looked like half fish, half humans. Um, and in Portugal, you have the same story and yeah, different places around the world. So um, that that made the connection for me and made my ego go like, okay, I can accept that. <laughs> nice. um, and since then, yeah, I've been in contact with them. They're, they don't play a huge role, um, but I feel them around definitely. Um, yeah, and I, it's also interesting what you said because a lot of people work with um, star beings as healers. Um, I have also a friend who is an um, energetic healer and one of his guides is a, or his my main guide he works with and he heals people is also a star being. So yeah, I have a different guide for my personal healing um, things, but I do feel them around, definitely. Like I, sometimes I feel like I can feel like a little UFO above my head. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, you guys, nice to see you. Yeah. But I still get a lot of um, people that I connect with um, star beings. Very cool. Yeah, I think that's becoming a little bit more, you know, in the mainstream talk because like spirit guides, a lot of people are really into talking about that. I did an interview last week and I was thinking it was just going to be a regular interview about intuitive art, but then he started asking me about guides and that's actually happened the last two times. And, and, you know, people who aren't like, okay, this I'm spirituality, people who don't put that in the forefront are really considering star beings and guides and yeah. Yeah, yeah. different dimensions. And it's really, really fun to watch because yeah. as you know, you've been in this world a really long time and it wasn't always this open. So it's really fantastic. I'm so excited yes. about that. It, it changed a lot. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's lots of people out there that did the work to make this happen. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, especially like all these people 40, 50 years ago who started talking about this and left them ridiculed and they didn't care. They just um, came up with their message. And I think that's really brave. Yeah. So I don't know why, but I'm just prompted to ask, are you writing a book or are you planning on writing a book about any of this? Yes, I started writing a book in last November. Um, right now I'm kind of stalled it because I have so much other stuff going on, but I definitely want to finish it by the end of the year and then publish it beginning of next year, I think. So it's going to be basically everything that I know about spirit guides and it's going to be called the spirit guide book. Excellent. Nice. Yeah. That's going to be really fun to read. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I'm feeling like this is a good place to end right now, but we'll definitely have you back on and talk about your book and um, hopefully people will check out your program and your free quiz and your free readings. And oh, we didn't mention um, you have a spirit guide show podcast starting in a yes. couple of weeks or a couple of months. In June, I want to launch it in June. Yes, Perfect. and you will be on it, so people should definitely come check it out. Yeah. Uh, you can find all of that, like the free readings, the free quiz, um, which is a spirit guide quiz. So you can find out what kind of spirit guide you have, like one of those sevens that I mentioned. Um, you can find all of it at spiritguides.co. Spiritguides.co. Perfect. Awesome. Well, this has been really, really fun. I know that yeah. we'll definitely have you back on and talk more. And um, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. I had a lot of fun. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this episode of the Intuitive Art Show. So go um, check out Emil's amazing spread of things for you to check out. Um, and then go take an intuitive art class at intuitiveartacademy.com. Thanks, everybody. Lots of love. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to Intuitive Art and you've never done it with me, go to intuitiveartacademy.com for your free class. You'll learn how to have a conversation with your higher self in three easy steps. That's intuitiveartacademy.com. And if you're already a pro or you've done the free class, 
and you want to learn more about creating abundance from your purpose, go to workyourpurpose.com and you'll watch a free video series all about what it takes to create a purposeful income from doing what you love. All right, enjoy and I will see you later. Bye bye.